So let's do a simple example on this image. Um, let's say I, I go through this uh, binary image in scan line order. I stop when I hit a 1, so that would be the first point right here. So at, the, at that point, I don't have any labels above and to the left, so I can make up a new label, and I'll call it a 1. Uh, at this point, I have a neighbor to the left, so I'll just use his label, which is also a 1. When I get over to here, though, I don't have any new label, uh, labels up and to the left, so I make a new label called 2. So next row, I continue the 1s, continue the 2. Here, I'm going to continue a 1 and a 1. At this point, I have neighbors up and to the left, so let me just pick one of them, let's say the, the two. And again, I have to do the same thing here. So what I'll record, though, is that um, I have this equivalence table that says um, my temporary labels of 1 and 2 are actually the same label. I'll call it a, a new label 1. So using this table, I go through the temporary label image and I replace all of the 1s and 2s with a 1. So those 2s now become a 1. So it, I've discovered basically that all of these pixels basically belong to the same region. Let's look at an example with MATLAB. So MATLAB has a... Um, function called um, BW label that will do connected component labeling. So basically the algorithm I just showed on the previous page. Um, we'll use uh, IM to BW to convert it to a binary image and then we'll display the um, results in false color using label to RGB. So I'll read in this image called uh, figure um, Okay, and this is actually a 8-bit integer image, so I'll use um, im to bw to convert it to uh, logical. So then I'll apply BW label to that binary image, and this produces a label image. And um, I'll just I want to know the number of n is the number of connected components that was found. In this case, it's a 17. So if I display that, I can display the label image, and it's a these are just um, label numbers. So just looking at those values using IM pixel info, um, this this disk for example has all the number 15, this is 14, this is 16, and so forth. And the, the dark ones you can barely see are like 3 and 5, etc. So to um, visualize that better, I'll use this um, uh, another function called label to RGB. So it <coughs> is going to uh, pick false colors for each of the labels and I'll create a new image I'll call RGB. So now it, it's much easier to see the different regions. It's just arbitrarily assigned different colors to all of these. Um, one thing you do notice here is that these two regions wound up with the same label because they actually touch. So um, these, these two regions are actually part of the same um, region. If I want to find the black regions instead of the white regions, I could do that by using, uh, I could basically flip the image, I could complement it. Uh, let's see here. Did I screw up there? So now I have, whoops, 
I think I need to go let's see uh, Okay, so I want to flip it, let's say, that way. Okay, so now I have um, white where I used to have black and black where I used to have white. So doing the same thing here, applying um, a BW label to the new B to get a new label image and count. So I've got 19 regions. Um, I'll go ahead and do the uh, false coloring. And um, you can see the different uh, regions that it found here. So basically the the background that used to be all black was is now assigned a single color and the insides of these donuts are all different regions here. In summary, morphological operations on binary images involve a structuring element. A structuring element is a small sub-image used to probe for structure. Morphological operations are useful for, among other things, eliminating small regions or filling in holes, and finding connected components. What is a connected component?